Hey, super awesome to be here today. In the last video, we talked about software testing in general. In this video, we will focus on unit testing specifically. So, let's go. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe. And I've been working as a software engineer for more than 15 years. And I switched to data science and data engineering about four years ago. And I'm here to share the few little things that I picked up along the way. So what are unit tests and why should you care? The idea of unit tests is to test a unit of code in isolation. And a unit of code might be something like a method. The idea here is that you treat this method as a black box and interact with it using only its parameters and then assert the expected behavior using the return values. So as for this example, you have a method that does a calculation, it expects a parameter and then it does some calculation and it returns a value. And in the test, you provide it with different parameters and then you assert the outcome of the return statement or of the return value. To test a method in isolation, we might need to eliminate external dependencies. This can be done in several ways and we will have a look at a very simple one in this video and we go into the various different approaches in the next video. So let's have a look at a simple example. As you see, this method depends on an external service, which is an external dependency, and we need to remove that one. So the first step would be to not have it hard-coded. To do that, we move that to a parameter so that we can pass the dependency to the method. And in this way, we can then also switch it with some dummy uh, external service that acts like it is the real thing, but in fact, it's just returning static values. And by doing so, you have the total control of the return values of the dummy service. And you eliminate dependencies to things like, for example, network connections. Also, unit tests help you to define a clear interface for your methods. For example, let's take the quote from the early example. It looks straightforward, right? But before that, a quick shameless plug to go completely insane on that like button. That would really help me out. Thank you very much. But back to what I was talking about. Let's have a look at the code from the early example. It looks straightforward, but what happens if we pass a null as a value or as a parameter to the method. You need to define this, right? How should your method behave in this case? Unit tests help you to think more carefully about how your code should behave. And it helps you to express this expected behavior in code and also helps you to ensure that the code actually behaves as you intended. Okay, okay, sounds cool you say, but why should I care? Well, First of all, as I said in the other video, unit tests are the easiest tests to implement and they run the fastest, but they also provide you a kind of certainty and a peace of mind about your code. So when you have unit tests in place, you can be quite sure that your code behaves like you want it to behave. Also, as your application gets more complex, there is no way in which you can manually test all the features and all the expected behaviors of your growing application. So this is why you need unit tests and you need to implement them from the beginning. So when your application reaches a certain complexity, you already have the tests in place and you can be sure that it behaves like you want it to behave and that there are no bugs. It also serves as some sort of documentation. So when later another teammate of you needs to interact with your code and is not sure about how to use it, that person can look into the unit tests and see how you are using your code in the test and also how the code is expected to behave. And this is a far better approach than having documentation in Confluence, which gets outdated in the moment where it's written basically, because the tests grow with your code base and the tests get modified as your code base gets modified. So the tests are always up to date. Since this channel is about data science and data engineering, let's talk about how to actually use unit testing in those areas. Sometimes in projects where I'm working in, I hear, yeah, sounds cool, but yeah, don't really work in data science and data engineering. But I have a different opinion on that. So let's take data science, for example. After you get the data, after you played around with it and analyzed, found patterns, whatever, you then need to filter it, you need to transform it, you need maybe to enrich it. And all those steps can be unit tested. You can, for example, test whether the transformation of a data frame has then the correct dimensions for your machine learning model. You can test whether a specific transformation transformed the data in the correct structure 
or whether the enrichment process actually filled in empty values and so on and so forth. So those are all steps or all things that you can test using unit tests. And then further down the line, they will give you the benefits that I have been talking about earlier. What I see usually in data science is that people are using Jupyter notebooks to quickly play around with data and to get some proof of concept working. But at some point, you also need to get this to production and need to build it or yeah, pour it in, into some sort of system. And in this step, you really want to have some tests in place to ensure that yeah, it does behave or it does the things that you want it to do. And the same basically applies to data engineering, even more so, because I mean, this is basically the, the key point to create data processing pipelines and data processing pipelines usually involve some sorts of transformations, right? And so it is no surprise that basically all the um, yeah, big data frameworks or data processing frameworks, like for example, Apache Spark or Apache Beam, have also some sort of testing capabilities built into the libraries, which you then can use to actually ensure that your code works properly. And more generally speaking, whenever you want to use a print statement during development to check whether the code actually does what you want it to do, you just write a test instead, and then you are also safe for the future. And then some people argue, yeah, that they don't use unit tests because they are still complex, and because they increase the development time. Yes, but it's as most things in life, when you do something properly, it usually takes a bit longer. But then you have the benefits later on. When you don't do tests and just implement your stuff quick and dirty and yeah, make it work somehow, further down the line, when your application grows and becomes more complex, then you have all this yeah, quick and dirty code that you now need to maintain and yeah, I don't want to work in this team at that point. So better invest uh, some time up front, make sure that the code base is in good shape, that it has tests, and then when your application grows, you are yeah, in a much better place to actually maintain that code and implement features and such. So as you have hopefully seen, unit tests bring many benefits and you should really, 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 really consider using them. So if you liked the video, please go completely insane on that like button. Leave a comment down below what you think about unit testing, whether you think it's a good idea or whether you think, yeah, that's not good. So see you in the next video in which we will have a closer look at the different testing libraries and also start writing our first tests. Yeah, so see you then. Bye bye.